All right, well, let me give the official cheers and say welcome to each and every one of you to Happy Hour with the Lincoln. This is where week by week I'll do my best to answer your stock market related questions, try to talk about some certain stock market topic, although I do have a tendency to wander off topic. I know it can be irritating, but that's just who I am. That's how I roll. And ultimately share my two decades of trading knowledge with you in the attempts to help you become a more professional and a more profitable trader. Now, if you're struggling with trading or you just want to go to another level, I'm going to post the link on the screen that takes you to the live trade room. You got to come by because I'm smoking. Not this kind of smoking. We're this kind of smoking. This kind of smoking. So make sure you visit us. Now, before we get started, look what I broke out. The Brood Lottich. Brood Lottich signature, 1990. 1990. I think I've only drank this like two on two occasions. As I said last week, special scotch, special occasions, special people, special stories. 1990, that was like when Nirvana was out. Remember Smells Like Teen Spirit? I loved that song. I loved grunge too. Anyway, bottle number 585 of 600. This, mm, tell you what. And when you get a hold of this vintage stuff, man, it is ripe. Like it, just like Octomore last week, this stuff, man. Wow, it like rips a layer of skin off the roof of your mouth when you drink it down. It's fantastic. It's totally fantastic. But anyway, nice to see each and every one of you here for Happy Hour with the Lincoln. Now, what are we going to talk about? Since we celebrated 100, episode number 100, we're now on 101. So when I was thinking about a topic, I'm like, what do you talk about on episode 101? You talk about trading 101. That's right, trading 101. And what I mean is I don't care what it is that you're trading out there or what type of a trader you are, whether you're trading cryptocurrencies, options, foreign currencies, stocks, none of that matters or doesn't matter how much money you have or how long have you been doing it. 101 means that there's a basic set of structured rules that every trader, every successful trader has, regardless of what instrument or how much money they're using to trade. Everybody sort of has this basic fundamental understanding. And these are the things I think I've learned most importantly over two decades of trading that when it started to become really good for me is when I stopped making so many mistakes. It's kind of like I always knew what I should be doing, but you know, trying to do what I know I should do in a real time environment and then, you know, beating those demons such as revenge trading and impatience and all that kind of stuff. That was the hardest thing. So it's more about, you know, learning what not to do. If you can just avoid what not to do, the other stuff will make it, make it all good. Make it, make you, make yourself rich, make you doing well at this. Maybe not rich, rich, but make you do really good at this. So we're going to talk about some of those. Now I know some of the things that I'm going to be talking about in today's video. I've probably said in a whiteboard or even a happy hour before, but I was recently reading a statistic that said you normally have to repeat something to someone between 30 and 35 times before they actually comprehend it. Yeah, it's just, this is a true study. It's like 30 to 35 times. Now, I know they didn't pull my girlfriend in this because she needs to ask like 220 to 380 times. Like she needs to repeat herself that much before she thinks that I can hear it. But hey, I'm a rebel. That's what us rebels do, right? We're just rebels. And rebels can be dirty in the stock market. So let's talk about this. 101. Maybe I should take a swig before each one of this stuff. Mm, let's go. So I think number one, these are no specific orders, and they're obviously I can't talk about every single thing that's important about trading in, in, in one of these videos, but I'll give you some of the things I think stand out more than others. Now, we've talked about it before. I would say one of the top is definitely a plan. I've mentioned this in whiteboards. I've mentioned this in happy hours. I know some of you that trade with me, we talk about this all the time. A plan or a process, a strategy, whatever you want to call it, you need to have some sort of direction every day. You can't wander around the marketplace because there's just too much going on every day for one person to comprehend. Like I said before, there's no Bo Jacksons or Deion Sanders in trading. You can't be the best foreign currency trader. You can't be the best futures trader and the best stock trader all in one. You're only going to have a limited amount of mental energy 
because you have to be able to react so quickly these days to some things. Or if you're trying to make money as a day trader or you're an aggressive trader, you're trying to make money or capitalize on your edge and you have to stay focused and you can only focus on a handful of stocks or a handful of securities or a handful of instruments. You can't just wander around everywhere. Doing that is going to take away your attention. So when you like to look at pro sports, they have specific people that just play specific. Like when you were in high school and you played football, you played like quarterback and safety and you kicked off the ball, right? But then the pros, they don't do that. They have a special kicker. They have a special quarterback. They have a special safety. You have to be a specialist. And I think most of you know that, but it's real easy for us to bounce around from strategies because once we start something, if we feel it's not working fast enough, which can be a delusion for some of us. If we think it's not working quickly enough, we may bounce from one strategy to the next strategy. And then once you start doing that, you become confused because you're trying to pull education from different people, from different parts, and you're getting conflicting things and it can turn into a fiasco. So for everyone, one of the biggest things obviously is a plan. And this is where I say also that everybody in trading has to find their own way. There's not a single person out there that can deliver you from rags to riches. I know I have a service. I know I have a trading room. I know you hear other gurus out there talk about my strategy makes millionaires. My strategy does this. There's tools and there's things that I can show you. Like I can give you this basket of how you should act as a trader, the types of stocks that you could trade, what you need to be looking for as a trader, how to manage your life, how to manage your business, how to manage your money but I can only hand you those tools. You know, if you don't, if you don't work on yourself and you don't work on those tools and try to find your own way, you're done. You know, that's like me handing a rifle to a monkey. It's like, you know, it's a great tool, but you know, anything is dangerous in the hands of a fool. So you've got to be unfool like and go out there and make your own way. Cause at some point we, not at some point, but all of us traders, we have to walk that journey alone. There's a certain time we have to walk down that path by ourselves. No one's going to help us. And that's when we find out what we're truly made of inside, you know, in the darkest, deepest, dirtiest parts. That's what we realize we're really here for and what we're all about and, and you know, what we're, what we're in this game for and what we're here to do. Also, something that I've learned, it's not about wins and losses. It's about losses. It's all about losses. So when I first started trading, I was all about the stats. I was all about, I loved stats. I was all about stats. I like statistics and stats. That's my thing. And I just wanted to be a winner. Like if I could put two bucks in the win column, I felt good. It's like, look, I'm a winning trader. Yeah, technically I am a winner. I won on the trade, but that's not really winning. If some of you remember, it was a, a happy hour or something I did last year when I said, you know, break even or winning, you know, small winners are actually losses. Now there's, you have to take those at times, definitely, but it's more important about the losses. And see, when we look at losses, we kind of know that because one of the worst quotes I think in the stock market business is let your winners run and cut your losers. Well, that's easier said than done because a lot of us don't know when we actually have a winner. And then a lot of us don't know when we really should cut a loser. Is it really a bad loser? Because you've obviously cut losers like I have in the past that were a mistake. You should have kept them because you would have been okay. But one thing I've learned about that, to, you know, that's a deep topic I could spend hours on. But one thing I learned about that is I think this is important is yes, you will take losses, on, especially if you're a day trader, you will take losses on a lot of trades that ultimately, if you would have held a little bit longer, would have worked. But what you're doing from that perspective, and I'm not talking about investors because that's people that are completely different, that have a time horizon. I'm talking about aggressive traders, money traders that are trying to do this for a living. You have a different approach and a different perspective about the market. What you're really trying to do is avoid disaster because at any given moment, it takes only one trade to knock your ass out. That's it. It takes one trade. And I think we've all kind of been in a position where we've gone on this roll and we've done very, very very well for ourselves. We've had a lot of consistency and we thought we were turning the corner and then we take a big loss and we got to give back months, maybe even a year's worth of gains. And I, like I said before, if I, if I told you, if you could go back into your brokerage account and they'll give you three trades back, they will credit your account for three trades, any three of your choosing in your account, which trades would you like to have back? It'd make a big difference, wouldn't it? And that's usually how most traders are when they start out. They have these monstrous losses, 
followed by these tiny, tiny little, little wins. So that's what it's all about. It's all about those losses. You've got to maintain losses. It's not about how many times you win. It's how you control losses. And then you'll eventually get the big winner and you won't have so much, you know, you won't have so much to make up for it. It's also a marathon, not a sprint. I've talked about this before and I understand it's, it's made to look easy these days. Two simple patterns, you're going to get rich. You're going to go from some loser. You attend a webinar and there's always some loser who was nobody six months ago and all of a sudden has like a McLaren. I don't know how they've done that. But trading is a long process. And I know this more now because I'm on my 22nd year here. And I thought in year number three that I was like, I've had enough of this in year number three. I'm never going to make it in year number three. Like, I really thought that. I'm like, I, I'm not going to make it. I've spent too long at this. And I've, I've used this before, too. I've talked about this. You look at other big-time careers, doctors, lawyers, physicists, other people. they they, they, got, they got to go to college for five or six years. They've got to go to post-grad school and all that stuff. So, you know, if you guys are out there, you're struggling after year three or four. It's not the most desirable scenario to be in. But for some of us, we all kind of do things differently, right? All of us kind of go our different routes. Some of us are going to learn quicker. Some of us are going to take a little longer. If you remember the you, me, and Dupree, seven different kinds of smoke. But one of the scenes in there when he said, we're just like, wait, we're pods. They're going to come down and get us later. Some of us are just floating around waiting for the pods to come down and get us. So That's what Dupree's doing with this life's little pod. Staying nimble until I get the call from the mothership. I resolved to that. Then I fight. Then you'll see Dupree coming in here throwing seven different kinds of smoke. For some of us, it's going to take a little bit longer, and that's okay. Just remember, you just keep working at it because the stock market will always be here. So if you're 30 years old, by the time you're 80 or 100, there'll still be a stock market. Another one, position sizing. Position sizing is probably one of the single greatest tools a trader can have, position sizing. It always astounds me that someone will come off the street with very little knowledge and start throwing around big weight trying to make money when you don't even know what you're doing. And that just never makes any sense. It's like, why would you take your hard earned money and try to bet it into the market or try to, you know, cause you're betting if you don't know what you're doing. Why would you try to do that? You know, if you're, I've always said, if you're a trader out there right now and you're not consistent, and consistency to me is you're profitable almost every single week. If you're not like three weeks out of the month, you know, three out of the four, three out of the five, whatever type of month it is, then there's no, you don't need position sizes. That's not going to be your solution. Your solution is going to be figuring out why you can't have consistency. Maybe your position sizes are too high. Too high position sizes causes people to panic. It causes them to, to think outside of technical analysis or think outside of fundamentals, and they start thinking about money, not the actual trade itself. So position sizes, super important. You should always trade to where you focus on the worst case scenario first. Look at the what is the worst thing that could happen and start from there and say, this is how much position size I need. If the stock moves against me $3, I want to make sure that I don't lose sleep at night or I don't want to get diarrhea or stomach cramps or go through all of that. Position sizing, it's amazing. Also, our business for every trader is feast and famine. Now, when you first start out, it's mostly just famine, right? You like occasionally get a feast, which is a bit annoying sometimes. But what I mean by this is sort of like peaks and valleys. There's going to be a time when things are really good for you and not so good for you. And the difference between a professional and an amateur trader is they recognize this. They don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and change everything they've ever known and try to jump to cryptocurrencies because they're hot right now or something like that. They just know when to kind of like, I said it before, you, you like to curl up in a turtle shell and then you explode and you curl up in a turtle shell and then you explode. You have to work through those markets. So you're aggressive when the market's in your favor. It's like risk on and risk off. I've talked about that before on a whiteboard, risk on, risk off. You're, you, you go for it when you're ready and then you do what you got to do, right? That you, it's up and down. Also the money, money in the market always cycles. What's bullish today will be bearish tomorrow. What's bearish tomorrow will be bullish today. 
Sometimes when you're looking at something, especially in a market, and it's constantly going up like this, and it's a new high, a new high, and a new high, or FOMO happens with Bitcoins and stuff like when they start going through these bubbles, these mini bubbles, and things start really exploding, traders get panicky because they feel they're going to miss out. Nobody wants to be left out. No, everybody hates to feel like they're the only person in the world that's not making money because, you know, you get on social media day, it looks like everybody's making money, and you feel like quite stupid, right? And it's not that way. It's money always rotates. So the things that are really good today, they're going to go through their distribution cycle. Maybe it's not right now, tomorrow, but maybe a week or two weeks, a month. You've seen it with Beyond, B-Y-N-D. It had its Momo. Now it's on its backside. You've seen AAOI do things like that. You've seen dry ships do that on an epic scale. You've seen GoPro in stocks do very similar things like that. So remember, money always, always rotates. And the market's always bullish. There's always people talking about market crashes, market collapses, and there have been. There definitely have been. But for the most part, the market has always been bullish because bull markets normally last between five and 12 years when bear markets only last six months to two years at best. And the reason for it is because that's really what the market is engineered to do. It's engineered to go up. If the market always went down, only traders would be doing that, only be in the market. That'd be it. People would never invest their money. And there's a lot of money in the market, a lot of money. There's 401ks, there's investors' money, there's foreign countries' money. The whole entire fabric of the economy depends on the market going higher. Now, there's definitely these bubbles or periods of time where things get out of control and they get too lopsided to one side and everybody's talking about, oh, this is not gonna end well, this is gonna crash and all that. But I think we've entered this age now where bullishness is just gonna be stretched out even longer, you know, because you're in an algorithmic society now where, computer, where the market, unless it's like one of those movies like iRobot where the robots turn against us on purpose, then they could probably tank the market. But with all this algorithmic trading, with all this QE, with what they learned from the other kind of collapses in the 2008 financial crisis, being able to build from that, the fear just keeps getting removed from the market. And I can remember when I started, you would have, every day was epic wild swings. Every day. I mean, every day the market would 100 up, 100 down, 100 up, 100 down. Several times throughout the day, every chart looked like a yo-yo up and down, up and down, up and down. We're not anywhere near that now. Over the last couple of years, it's just like slow up, a little quick drop, and everything gets picked back up, close drop, and so on. So it's like most of it's bullish, and some of you probably know that, but one of the things is you can't buy into the propaganda. There will always be market corrections. That's important to a healthy market. That allows people to get into better prices. But if we're having this conversation 20 years from now, the market will be higher unless something really, really bad has happened, like an asteroid has hit the earth. And maybe even that's bullish. Who knows? Everybody's just so bullish. But for the most part, longing is the way to go. It's the path of least resistance. There are definitely some things that are great, like shorting with, with Beyond and, and other types of stocks. There's certain things where it calls for it. But for the most part, you need to kind of turn off that news. And that would be where I kind of finished it up with news. News is probably the worst thing in the world for a trader. News is horrible. It is absolutely horrible. Sir, I should say certain news. Some traders depend on it, but I don't even know any traders that really bank all the time on, on news. It's, it's just, it can be so ignorant. And I'm talking about really the, the, the thing like CNBC, those types of news. Financial media is a joke. It really is. And I can understand on one side why it's a joke. I mean, this is the stock market. Hell, these happy hours are hard enough to come up with things that are interesting and entertaining. You can only talk about the stock market so much. It's quite boring. It really is. It's not that exciting of a topic to discuss. So every day they've got to come up with 10 things that they're going to talk about on the same market that they talked about yesterday. So you've got to get creative. And sometimes they just say stuff and just make noise to make noise. And they got to write articles and stuff like this. I, I understand it from their point of view. Like I said, even coming up with ideas for happy hour is difficult. And I only do one of these a week. If I had to do one of these a day, I would just be talking in circles, actually more circles than I'm talking about right now. So kind of remember those things. There's definitely other, other things about it. But what I've learned mostly through out my years of trading, the things that made the most important were things like turning off the news, focusing on the long term, that this is something that you're committing to as a long term career, having a plan, having a process, 
focusing on controlling your risk, knowing when your your cards are on the table and your edge is there, and then you go aggressive, and then you kind of pull back a little bit when things aren't aren't so good, and that there's going to be periods of times when you're doing really well, and there's going to be ter- periods of time when you're not. The only thing different from when I was a complete amateur blowing up my account to a professional now was the mistakes that I made, the impatience that I had, the feast and the famine, they've all just narrowed. It's, everything has gone down, and it's like when it's bad, it's not that bad. You know, when it's good, it's really, really good. So you kind of change these things, but you learn these in time. And it doesn't matter how long you've been at this or where you are right now. For some of it, it takes it takes a little little bit of time, you, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not the easiest thing in the world to pick up. Just kind of stay in there. Remember what you came here for and try to be a little bit better each day than you were the day before. And all's good. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Brood Lodich says he appreciates 101. Hope you guys appreciated Happy Hour 101. Until 102, trade them well, guys. Take care. Talk to you then.